Welcome back. In this video, we're going to finish up section 9.2, which is on simplifying square roots. So in the first half, we looked at how we had a product property for roots that lets us uh, split up a square root into a product of two square roots. Uh, the quotient property is similar, except of course it deals with a quotient. So it says, if A and B are non-negative real numbers, and B is non-zero, remember you have to be careful about division and zero, and B is not zero, then the square root of A divided by B is the same as the square root of A divided by the square root of B. In other words, if you have a fraction and you're taking a square root of it, you can break the square root in half at the fraction bar. So let's see how this works out with a couple of examples. So we're going to try the uh, square root of 25 sixteenths. This would be the same as the square root of 25 divided by the square root of 16. And the square root of 25, you know, is 5. The square root of 16 is going to be 4. So our final answer is just 5 fourths. Okay, 75 48 is going to take a little more care because neither 75 nor 48 is a perfect square. Um, but that's okay. Um, we won't be put off too much. This will be the square root of 75 divided by the square root of 48. And we just practice how to do these. Uh, 75 is, that'll be 25 times three, right? So we'll have the square root of 25, square root of three. For 48, that is going to be the square root of uh, 16 times the square root of three. Here, the couple of square roots of three will divide out. The square root of 25 will be five. The square root of 16 will be four. Okay, I should mention that if we had so chosen, we could have simplified the 75 48ths first, if, uh, if I'd thought about it, which honestly I didn't. Uh, 75 is 25 times 3, 48 is 16 times 3. We could have divided out the 3s at that point and then broken up the radical, but um, I didn't think of doing it. Uh, personal preference there, I guess. Okay, here's one with uh, variables in it. For this one, I think I will simplify inside the radical uh, first. a to the eighth power divided by a to the sixth power will be a squared. We're taking the square root of a squared and that'll just be an a. Okay, not too bad there. Uh, here's 75x to the fifth divided by 3x. Once again, this one, I think it's gonna be better if we simplify first. 75 divided by three is 25 x to the fifth divided by x is x to the fourth. And then we can simplify that. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of x to the fourth is going to be uh, x squared. And that's it. OK, 19 49ths. Uh, we'll call that the square root of 19 divided by the square root of 49. The square root of 19, we can't really do anything with that at all, so we're going to leave that as the square root of 19. The square root of 49, though, looking at 7 for that. Okay, let's continue. Uh, 28 over 81. Uh, for this one, there aren't any common factors uh, that we can divide out. So let's just separate this into two separate square roots. We'll have the square root of 28 divided by the square root of 81. Uh, for 28, that is going to be 4 times 7. And then the square root of 81, we can just do that right now and get 9. So the square root of 4 will give us 2. So we'll have 2 square roots of 7 over 9. Or some people like to write that as 2 ninths square root of 7. Either way is okay. All right, the next two have got a couple of variables in them, um, or one variable in each of these, I guess. Um, so 24 and 49 don't have any common factors. So I'm not going to be able to simplify that first. Um, so instead, uh, the numerator, 24, uh, that's 6 times 4. So I'll write that as 4 times 6. We'll have p squared and a p. So that's how I'll split up that numerator uh, radicand. And then 49, uh, that will be uh, end up being 7. Okay, so in this first step, what happened? I did a couple things. Uh, we separated this radical into a quotient of two radicals. And the square root of 24 p cubed, I split 24 into 4 times 6. And p cubed, I separated into p squared times p. Okay, 
the square root of 4p squared. And then we'll have square root of 6p. Down below, square root of 49 is a 7. The square root of 4p squared will be 2p. And the square root of 6p is the square root of 6p. Down below, we will still have the 7. Okay. All right, 80a cubed over b to the sixth power. The numerator, 80a cubed. Denominator, square root of b6. That 80, 80, I know we think of that as 10 times 8, but it's going to be nicer if you say 16 times 5. And a cubed will be a squared times an a. Down below, we have square root of b to the sixth power, and that will be b cubed. Okay, down below, 16a squared, its square root will be 4a. So we'll have 4a square roots of 5a, down below b cubed. Okay, so hopefully this is getting better uh, with practice. Uh, like a lot of things, almost everything in math, it gets better with practice. Um, we just have two more examples, and then we're uh, all done. So 64x to the 7th over 9x cubed. For this one, uh, we'll simplify inside the radicand first. The number parts, there's no simplification, but x to the 7th divided by x cubed will give us x to the 4th power. Now we'll split that into two separate radicals. That's the square root of 64x to the 4th power divided by the square root of 9. The square root of 64, 64 x to the fourth power is going to be 8x squared, and the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, for this last one, uh, take a minute, pause the video, try this one yourself, and then restart the video and see how you did. All right, so for this one, there's a lot going on. We have 50 and 72. Um, I know 50 is 25 times 2. 72 is 36 times 2, so we can do a little something there. We've got factors of x and y that we're going to be able to simplify. So what I would do is um, simplify first before breaking up this radical. We'll call that 25 times 2 and then 36 times 2. x to the fifth divided by x to the fourth will give us a single x. y cubed divided by y will give us y squared. This is just fraction simplifying first, no roots or anything. The common factors of 2 divide out, that will leave us with 25y squared x. I flip-flop those, um, right, just to uh, make it clear what we're going to do with it next, which is to separate the perfect squares from the not-so-perfect squares. So we have 25y squared x still in the numerator, 36 in the denominator. Okay, up top, we're going to split that into 25y squared in one square root and the square root of x in the other. Down below, we'll have the square root of 36. The square root of 25y squared is 5y. Square root of x is the square root of x. And down below, we'll just have a 6. Okay, that takes us to the end of our work on simplifying square roots for right now. Um, we saw how we basically can use the product property and quotient property of radicals in order to separate things. We saw in this last part that we use a lot of kind of fraction simplifying ideas to help us. In the next sections, we'll be working on arithmetic with radicals, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And uh, along the way, we'll get more practice at this simplification. All right. So in the meantime, let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.